This is my theory on how Mormonism played a role in Ruby Frankie's child abuse. To catch you up, Ruby Frankie is a Mormon mom who rose to YouTube fame, vlogging the stories of her six children and husband on her YouTube channel, Eight Passengers. This August, her son showed up at the neighbor's house with deep wounds in his wrists and ankles. He had clearly been tied up and was so malnourished that he came asking for the neighbors to call the police and for food. She's been charged with six counts of child abuse, and she has pled guilty to four of those. There's been a lot of coverage on this case, but I think looking at it through a Mormon lens is important and adds clarity. Ruby Frankie's parenting often sparked controversy and many people called her abusive, even on what she was willing to show online, what she posted in her videos. Some of these instances include making her teenage son sleep on a beanbag for seven months as punishment for teasing his brother. And when her six-year-old's teacher said that the six-year-old forgot her lunch, Ruby Frankie's response was that she should just go hungry and that is punishment for her forgetting her lunch. As someone who spent seven years teaching, I think a lot of these instances fall under very traditional strict parenting that is so borderline abusive, many people think it should be actual abuse. It should be categorized as abuse. But unfortunately, because of how CPS operates, the children will almost never be removed from the home because of these situations. Usually they try to do some sort of education or CPS just shrugs and says they're not doing anything to break the law and they walk away. I honestly think one of the reasons this YouTube channel was so successful is because a lot of parents are this strict. A lot of parents love to see this type of almost borderline abusive content because it reinforces that they are good parents too. When they see Ruby Frankie doing these things to teach her kids a lesson, they subscribe because they want to see more content like that. Mormonism comes to the center though when Ruby Frankie teams up with the Mormon therapist Jody Hildebrand. Jody Hildebrandt belongs to this group of therapists which is essentially hand-selected by the Mormon Church. The Mormon Church wants to make sure that if, say, there's a gay kid that comes to a Mormon therapist, the Mormon therapist will not be affirming. They want a therapist who will try to basically do conversion therapy to the child. So to get on this list of Mormon-approved therapists, you essentially have to say you're willing to therapize from a religious Mormon perspective. Because of this, Jody Hildebrandt actually had her license revoked for a period of time because she wasn't following the rules based off of the licensing on the federal level, she was just doing her Mormon therapy, which isn't actually up to the standard. There are three doctrines I'm reminded of when I look at a case like Ruby Frankie. You can also see this in the story of Lori Vallow, who killed her children, who also said that her children were possessed by devils and it was her responsibility to take them from the earth. If you've read the book Educated, you see similar themes where Tara Westover's parents, specifically her father, like a possession and in many ways practice dominionship or ownership over her and use that as a justification for child abuse. This idea of dominion or ownership is in the Bible, it's in the Book of Mormon, and typically I think for mainstream Mormons, it's taken to mean that the husband has dominion over the family. He is the head of the household. That is a phrase that should be familiar to everyone. Head of the household. However, when taken too far, this idea of dominion or being the head of the household or having dominion as the mother over the children is viewed very much as ownership. Children are not humans, they are belongings. And so if you have this traditional view over your kids, if you've heard the phrase, I brought you into this world, I can take you out of it. When these people take this Mormon or religious belief to the extreme, they believe that they own these children and, and that they can do whatever they see fit with them. The Book of Mormon is also filled with justification for violence based on religion. There's a story where one of the main Book of Mormon characters, Nephi, cuts off the head of his foe in the name of God and because God literally commanded him to do so. I think that's why we see Lori Vallow, Jody Hildebrandt, Ruby Frankie saying that they have a spiritual feeling that their children are evil and that that they have to punish them based off that feeling. Mormons also believe that personal revelation is the most important aspect of religion. Personal revelation is what tells you that Joseph Smith was a prophet, that the Book of Mormon is the word of God, and that God exists at all. And so when we see these mentally ill narcissistic people who are also Mormon, they use personal revelation as justification for why they should do these things to their children. If they get a feeling like, my kid is bad, then they have justification for using violence against their children. In one of the most recent updates in the case, Ruby Frankie said that her three-year-old son was watching porn and that he was sexually abusing his siblings and kids in the neighborhood. But I think the reason why she's using pornography as an excuse for child abuse is because she really is drinking the Kool-Aid. She thinks and believes that there is nothing worse than pornography. Mormons believe that very few things are worse than pornography. Her claim that her son was using this, to me, is proof that she fully believes that he has an evil spirit. 